Hello and thanks for joining us. Coming up. She's been called provocative, controversial and irritating. Today's guest fearlessly confronts the truths and myths of South Africa's complex history, but not always in a way that's been appreciated by her home country. Here in France, she's adored having created work for the Paris Opera Ballet and been awarded the country's highest honour, the National Order of Merit. She's in Paris for a series of shows called African Queen's Weekend at Paris's Philharmonique. Let's meet Robin Orlin. Robin, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hi. Now, you're very charming and pleasant to talk to. Um, <laughs> so it's quite hard for me to understand all this sort of you being called provocative and you're sometimes accused by reviewers of lacking subtlety. Your nickname is a permanent irritation. What's all that about? What are you doing that's creating such strong reactions? Well, I think a lot of that kind of um, discourse happened when I was much younger. Um, but I think I still put my foot in it. And I think that's it. I put my foot in it. And I say things that are not uh, really what people particularly want to hear in the theatre. What sort of things? Like, is it the topics you're covering? I think it's the topics. I think it's the way I do it. I have a certain attitude towards the passivity of the public. So I try to make them more proactive <laughs> as I do the dancers. Um, I'm usually, the dancers have a hard time with me as well because I, I, I don't let them fall into very typical dancey mentalities. Okay, well, we've been speaking to someone you've worked with a lot um, over the years, the director of Paris's Residential Centre for Artists, Benedict Alio. We asked her why she thinks your work gets some strong reactions. If Robin audience performances uh, uh, might be irritating for some and or annoying, I think it's also, uh, again, a question of uh, audiences and an art practice which involved actually uh, a lot, um, the whole public space, uh, different kinds of spaces. She always relies quite uh, greatly on the participation of audiences in many different ways. I need your assistance. I need your full assistance. Let's get rid, let's get rid of that ugly snake. Everybody, let's get rid of that ugly snake. Let's get rid of that ugly snake. The images and we see there are from your work, Beauty Remain, for just a moment, then return gently to her starting position, showing at Paris's Philharmonique this week. The audience is coaxed into throwing plastic bottles um, at the stage. Why do you want the audience to be so involved? Um, well, I think, I think now more than, e more than ever, you know, we are living in a world where we control so many things and the audience think that they can come and s to the theatre and sit back and get entertained. And I would like them to participate more. Um, and actually now looking at that image, throwing bottles at the snake, I think, oh my God, that poor snake. But, because for some people, snakes are beautiful. But for a lot of people, it's about fear and ugliness. So, you know, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Shocking even to you. Well, um, you do deal with serious subjects like poverty, um, AIDS and xenophobia. Talk to me about the challenges of being a white South African, dealing with the issues and the racism against black South Africans in your home country. Um, well, we have a terrible past. We have a terrible history. Um, and um, I think that slowly things are starting to, to find um, some kind of a balance. Um, there's still a great uh, schism between rich and poor. Um, but you do have a mixed middle class now, um, which is, especially in Johannesburg, which makes things a little bit more easier to, to, to operate. But um, it's so difficult. You know, it's, um, uh, it's so hard to... It's almost as though the Truth Commission didn't work for us. 
Okay, well, let's have a look at the show. It's more, much more than a dance show. It's a mix of film, live video, image, plastic, arts, text, music, audience participation, and so much more. You created it with the trailblazing dance company moving in to dance, Moffatong. Let's take a look. <laughs> Your show beauty it's showing as part of African Queens Weekend at Paris's Philharmonique. It's also International Women's Day this week. Why are things with names like African Queens International Women's Day still vital this year in 2017? Um, I've got mixed feelings about that because I think we should always be African Queens. We shouldn't just have a weekend where we're African Queens and we should always be um, revered as women not just a week of, of a woman. Or a day. Or a day. <laughs> um, so um, I, but obviously, you know, the glass ceiling hasn't arrived. We still are being paid less than uh, men. Um, there's, there's, there's still these things happening. So we have to keep these things going in order to make people more, more conscious of, um, um, African queens and, 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 and fantastic women. <laughs> okay, well, I want to talk about another controversial dancer who's in the ballet world now. Um, do you know anything about the Ukrainian star Sergei Polunin? I know about him. I, I don't know. Okay, well, he's in, you're going to find out now. A new documentary called Dancer is out this week, looking at the life of the man labelled as the bad boy of ballet. Sergei Polunin is regularly called the greatest dancer of his generation. Rebecca Rossman has more. He's known as the James Dean of the ballet world. Tattoo-clad, Sergei Polunin made international headlines when at only 22, he famously walked out of the Royal Ballet. But Oscar-nominated director Stephen Cantor focused on Polunin's rise to stardom, starting with his humble upbringing as a child in Ukraine, on the sacrifices his parents made to boost his career. You know, it's important not to forget what um, parents did for you, not uh, what friends are. Uh, so it's a good reminder about things. And for artists, it's to move forward and not to be scared and not to be lazy. After joining the Royal Ballet School in 2007, Polunin became the company's youngest principal male dancer in 2010, at only 19. But Polunin quickly became known for his bad boy behavior. This ultimately led him to suddenly quit the ballet just days before he was set to star in a new production. Despite difficulty coming to terms with his talent, Polunin's skills as a dancer are unquestionable. Take me to church. His fame went viral after collaborating with David LaChapelle in a 2015 video set to the hit song, Take Me to Church. He's not a modern dancer. He's, he doesn't um, break the boundaries of or the wall of ballet, and, and uh, he's a classical dancer. But within that within that framework of classical dance, he pushes it to the limit. I mean, he dances like his life depends on it, and you see that and you feel that passion when you watch him dance. And I think that everyone can relate to that. Now that he's back on the scene, Palunin says he's planning to make the transition into acting. He's set to star opposite Jennifer Lawrence in the upcoming spy thriller Red Sparrow, and with Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz in Kenneth Branagh's adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. Now, Palunin actually said he um, quit ballet because he was stifled um, by ballet. Do you think there's a problem when it comes to young dancers' psychological needs, or is that something completely specific to ballet, the ballet world? I think it's both. I think it's both. Um, I, but I think the ballet world can be restrictive. And um, I think the training is very restrictive. 
um, I think the profession is, is, it's a very hard profession. You really, um, you live for, for this very small um, salary that you get and what you get back from dancing your heart out. Okay, well, another world that's often criticised for its treatment of young talent is the fashion world. Um, it's Fashion Week here in Paris. I wanted to talk about what your dancers and your show are wearing, made out of plastic cups, um, CDs, old shopping bags. What fashion statement are you making? Well, I was, I was really looking at um, beauty, um, in inverted commas, and um, I wanted the the costume the designer that I worked with a very well known South African uh, fashion designer Marianne Fassler. I said to her, I really want to make costumes from nothing. Um, I want because this is how this is one one thing that is really beautiful in in Africa is how we make use of um, ordinary objects and we give them different metaphors. And uh, so I'm talking about beauty, really. But um, so, so what I asked from her was to please make costumes out of used objects. Robin, thank you so much for joining us here on France 24. And you can see Robin's work, Beauty, remained for just a moment, then returned gently to her starting position at Paris's Philharmonique as part of African Queen's Weekend until the 12th of March. And one designer at Paris Fashion Week brought dance to the catwalks in a homage to George Michael at the Paris Opera. We're going to leave you with Stella McCartney's show. Thanks for watching. There's more coming up after this.